Church, come on, church. It's not this is listen, it's time to get in. It's time to get in. It's time to get in. This is a moment of revival. This is a moment where the spirit of the Lord is moving upon us. Come on. Come on. It's not time to be seated. It's not to be time to be complacent, but it's time to call upon God. The last time I was here, brother, you was asking me certain things. If you were hungry for God, there's been a transformation in your life. Press it more. Press it more. Press it more. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, come on, press through. Press through, come on. Break the barrier, come on, break through. You need a breakthrough. You need an outpouring. It's not about me, it's not about us. It's about God moving among you. Oh, don't be satisfied. Don't be satisfied with what you got right now. Oh, press, come on. Come on, brother. It's not time to get up here. You get down there, you pray with your brothers. Come on, y'all step closer. Come on. Touch God. Touch God. Come on. Come on. Lay hands on him, brother. Come on. Press through. Come on. I can't get it past you. I can't get it out of my heart. We have to press through to touch God. Come on, little sister. Come on. Press through. Let God touch us. Let the, 
This is the hour, es la momento, es la hora. Necesitamos que empezar en el centro del Señor. Ahorita, 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 ahorita. Vengan, 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 ahorita. Aleluya, aleluya, aleluya. Aleluya, aleluya, aleluya. Breakthrough. Breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. Glory to God. Aleluya, aleluya, aleluya. This is the moment, this is the hour God wants to minister to us. Moment, the hour God wants to minister to us. And He's doing it, He's doing it, He's doing it. I'm not satisfied the way I'm feeling. Listen to me, church, and I want you to look at me right here, right now. I want you to look at me. Listen to me. I, I want you to just listen to me, and I want you to say it with me. Father God, I am yours, and you are mine. You know me. You know where I'm at. You know where I live. You know my circumstance. You know my name. You know my address. Therefore, you know what I'm facing. And as a, church, as a church, you know what we face. You know what we face. I'm asking you, Father, asking you, Father open, the open the windows of heaven and pour out upon us the assembly at Crawford, the Spirit of the Lord, in a greater measure. It doesn't matter what the enemy plans are. You have plans for me to bless me to lift me up, not plans of failure, but plans of success. This neighborhood is in your target. I am part of this neighborhood, and I'm claiming it for Jesus 
I'm here, I'm here. because you've called me. My family's out there. My brothers is out there. My sisters are out there. My uncles, my aunts. Drugs has a hold of them. Alcohol has a hold of them. They're addicted. I break that curse. I break that curse in Jesus' name. They're coming out. 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 I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. They're coming out. They're coming out in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say it with me now. Say it with me. I receive your blessings. I receive your promises. I receive all that you have for me. I receive it. I see my family coming. I see my sons coming. I see my daughters coming. I see my husband's coming. I see my wife's coming. And they're giving their heart to Jesus. I see it. I believe it. I accept it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Stand up, brother. Come on. Stand up. Get your brothers. Get your brothers. Come here. Hey, you two guys, come. Right here, come. No, stay right there. Stay right here. Come on. I want to tell you what God has just showed me. Come on, come on. Join hands. Join hands. The legacy of your grandfather has fallen upon you. It's a great legacy. It's a great inheritance. There's been a change in your life, but there's going to be a greater change. God is saying to you, listen to me when I'm saying clean up your act. It's not about the way you look, and it's not about you. It's about what God wants to do through you. It's time to jail together. It's time to mend together. It's time to pull together. I'm going to send you not just to the Philippines, but around Asia and to the other nations of the world. I see you guys working in Europe, working and ministering in Europe, not just as a team, but as a ministry powerhouse for the glory of God. songs to come before the world and declare the wonderful name of Jesus, I said to you, this is not your identity. Your identity is in Christ Jesus. You, are been, you have been bought with a price. You are not your own. You belong to God. God will not let the promise go that he promised your grandfather. Do you hear what I'm telling you, brethren? God will not let it go. He will accomplish it in you. Rise up, brethren. Rise up and let the Spirit of the Lord rise upon you. The rise and fall of this assembly depends on you. You are the leaders. You are the men in the, that God has chosen to fall on your faces before God. To pray and to seek His face. To break the shackles. To loose the bands. You're the key. Do you hear what I'm telling you? You're the key. Not your looks. Not your name. Not your fame. Not your talent. But on your knees before God. Hallelujah. Whatever you do on your knees, God will do it that street. You want to preach, you want to sing, you want to play, I'm going to tell you that's good. Those are gifts and the talents of God. But you'll not move one hand, you'll not move one heart until you move the heart of God in prayer. To join a church. I'm not calling you to form an organization. I'm calling you to bombard heaven. Only the violent take it by force. You want God to move in this Crawford Assembly? You want God to move in this community? You are the key. You are the Daniels. Oh, can I tell you? You are the Timothy. You are the Titus. You are the Pauls. And you are the Peters. You are the John. You are the men, the shapers, and the movers of the, by the Holy Ghost in this place. Do you believe me? Amen. 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 Amen.
broken. That curse is broken. Oh, in the name of Jesus. You are Thank sons you. of the Most High God. Say it with me. Amen. Say it. Shout it. Come on. I am a son. So shout it, brother. I am a son. Of the Most High God. Say it. The Most High God. Come on. Say it with me. Come on. I'm a son. The Most High God. baby sister, yet the wife. Do you hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Glory to God, baby sister. Let me tell you, I told you back there in the back, God has given you a gift to speak not just one language, but many languages. Don't let it fall to the ground. You are a voice to be heard and to be reckoned with. You, I, I know this. When she was preaching, you were saying, God, I want to preach like that. God, I want to talk like that. God, I want to share like that. But you say, well, I, I just don't know how. Oh, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, Lord, to share, to speak, and to declare. Listen, you are the catalyst. You are the key. You're that, you're that rock that's going to roll out and bring in the captives. Do you hear what I'm saying? Say it with me. I. I don't hear you. Say it. Shout it out. I am a daughter of the Most High. God. God. Now shout it out and mean it. I am the daughter of the Most High God. Keep saying it.
Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Spirit of the Lord is in this place. There's evidence here of that. Right? There's evidence here of that. Listen, Pastor. The days of old are just, just that. Days of old. These are days of new beginnings. These are days of outpouring. These are the days that your father desired to look into and planted and plowed the fields for this very moment that the sons of God that would come out of his spiritual loins and his physical loins would rise up and work in the harvest fields that he saw. This is that day. This is that moment. I wish you would hear me. Somebody's hand, under it.
on in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. seat then come up here then come up here come on if you want to get out of your seat you say well now wait a minute I don't know about all of that I do I know get out of your seat and come and stand here and worship your God can I tell you get crazy before God you say well I'm too refined for that oh friends let me tell you in heaven there's going to be shouting in heaven there's going to be jumping Oh, do you, do you hear what I'm saying, baby brother? Do you hear? I'm talking to you with a ball head. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you hear what I'm Do you believe? Come, get out of that chair and you come up here. Come on. Come on. Pásense. Get out of the seat. Pásense. Vénganse. It's not time to sit down. Vámonos. Vamos a orar. Vamos a orar, sí, pero vamos a levantar las levantas al Señor. Ahorita, 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 en el nombre de Cristo. Hallelujah. You guys ready? Amen. I have a word, I have a word from the Lord for this group right here. God said that he has prepared a banquet for you. And each one of you is your own dish at that table. But just like you can't live on steak alone, just like you can't live on fruit alone, just like you can't live on just one of those food groups alone, you all need each other. And he says that your relationship with one another goes outside of this band, it goes outside of this team, it goes outside of even your family relationship. He wants you to develop and to um, uh, go deeper in your relationship with one another. That means that outside of playing instruments together, your re- he's a God of relationship. Your, he said your relationship is not where it needs to be. He said once you have that foundation, the deeply rooted foundation in that relationship that he has established, not that your parents have established, not that any, what he has established, he's brought you together. And once you have found that within one another, once you have rooted that in, He is going to grow you, and you're going to have fruit that's going to go beyond this church, beyond this city. It's going to grow out of Bakersfield. But first, you have to establish the roots, and it's not there yet. So that's his word for you, is that your relationship needs to to be mended and developed. Amen? Amen. You receive that. that. Amen. Are you ready? Amen. Amen. Are you ready? Amen. Are you ready? Dwayne, are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Bible says, I will enter his courts with thanksgiving. Oh, no, with thanksgiving, right? And with worship. Guess what? We are in the Good and your mercy endure it forever. Yeah. Sing, Lord, you are good now. Endure it forever. Come on, I want to hear you loud. Sing, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. Right. Sing it one more time. Lord, you are good. Lord, you, you are good you. and your mercy endure it forever. People from <laughs> every nation. People from every nation and time, from generation to generation, we worship you. Sing hallelujah. You are good, yeah. Lord, you are 
good at your mercy and do it forever. Lord, you are good, yeah. Lord, you are good. Your mercy endures forever. Oh, I see it. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good at your mercy endures forever. People from every nation. People from every nation and tongue. From generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. We worship you. We worship you. Sing hallelujah, 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 we worship you for who you are. You are good. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You are good all the time, all the time. You are good, you are good all the time, all the time. You are good, you are good all the time, all the time. You are good, you are. Good. I'm not Catholic, I'm not Presbyterian, I'm not 
Methodist I'm Pentecostal from the top of my little bald head to the bottom of my little brown feet I'm Pentecostal ooh glory to you're not hearing me you're looking at me like what are you talking about listen 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 if your favorite football team in California was in the Super Bowl and they won I guarantee you would not be quiet you would not be quiet I can just almost see you guys in front of your TV talking to that TV talking to that quarterback talking to that 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 tackle talking to those guys like they're hearing you oh you're talking to them if you had only done this armchair quarterback if you would have only done that if you just listen to me I'll tell you how to win oh no but can I tell you that the God of heaven he's not waiting for you to get up there but he's come down among you and he wants to hear your voice and praise and worship dance with him shout with him declare unto him the glory of his name and God will show up and bless you more than what you can contain when you go home today you said whoo I was in a crazy church today I was blessed I was blessed I was blessed
Jesus, we shout your name. Jesus, we make your praise. Oh, 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 I want everybody to jump. You are glory.
released. Listen to me. When we begin to lift up our voices and praise, when we begin to magnify God, the supernatural power of God is released. And when it's released, all things can happen. You have no need for someone to touch you.
like they want more. They want more, they want more. You want more? Warm up. 
Are we really ready to go into the deep water? Do you really want the deeper things of God? The water's deep. It's over our heads. The enemy says you can't do it. Says you're gonna fail everywhere you go. Are you really ready for the deep water? I'm going in the water, I'm gonna get ready. You know, I want you to know, I did a message and I'm glad it's in my Bible. We don't need notes when we have Jesus. We don't need anything but what he's already given us. We just have to learn to believe him because he's given it all to us. When we asked Jesus into our hearts, he gave all of it to us. You know, and we don't have to just tip our toes in the water because it may be cold. And you know, you think about the story of Peter. They've been working all day long and Jesus said, get in that boat, go to the other side. He said, I'll be along later. And he went to pray. Those men got in that boat. And they began to row across to the other side. And the word says the winds came up. The storms came and it was rough. They didn't know what they were going to do. They looked and they saw what they thought was a ghost. But it was Jesus. He's walking across that water. And you know, I can see Peter in that boat. He's looking. He doesn't know for sure. And Jesus said, all's well, it's me. And Jesus is saying, I'm ready, I'm here. And Peter's saying, man, what would it be like to walk on the water? Everybody else, they're sitting in that boat. But Peter stands up. He said in his side, he said, what would it be like to step out into the water? What would it be like? He was the only one. But he said, Jesus, if it's you, call me. And Jesus said, come. And he took that step out of the boat, out of the boat, and into the water. And he began to walk toward Jesus. What was going through his mind that day? What was he feeling? He's walking on the water. And then he took his eyes off of Jesus. When he took his eyes off Jesus, he said, whoa, this water get deep. It's cold, there's a storm. And Jesus reached his hand out. And he took him, came into the boat. You know, every one of us are in a boat. This church, is a boat. Pastor, you're the helmsman. You don't know where this boat's gonna go, but Jesus does. And he's saying, Pastor, do you really trust me? Do you really trust me? Will you step out of the boat? Because you know, he may not ask you to step into the water, he may ask you to go heal that man that can't see. He may ask you to go over there to the one that just lost their baby boy and raise that baby boy. How many of you feel like your pastor can lead you there? Do you really believe it? But I'm gonna tell you, Church, he cannot do it by himself. Jesus wouldn't allow it. He's got to be surrounded by a family that says, I'm ready to step into the deep water. You know, I'm going to share just a few things with you quickly. I came from what they call the wrong side of the track. Everybody I met, 
They said, he'll never do anything. He'll never amount to anything. All he can do is get a minor job. But Jesus had a plan. Did I know it? No. But Jesus had a plan. I always dreamed. I'd go to bed at night and I'd dream about flying. And I could see myself soaring over the top of the trees. And it was such a peace inside. But it was a dream. I'd wake up in the morning and I'd say, there's no way I'll ever fly. It wasn't real. When I was 16 years old, I graduated early. I needed a job. My mother couldn't make it by herself. I found a job working at an airport when planes would come in. Planes that I dreamed about flying. They'd come in and I would put fuel in them, take them by hand, roll them back and put them in the hangers. And there was a day that came where the owner of that portion of the airport, he came to me and he said, would you really like to fly? And I said, oh, I want to soar. He said, if you'll work extra hours, we have an instructor that will give you lessons. He'll teach you how to fly. And I began to take lessons. And the instructor, he said, you have a gift for this. And I said, I love it. And in six and a half hours, we landed on that runway. He said, just pull over to the side. I pulled over and he got out. He said, now I want you to take this plane and take it up and begin to fly and land and fly and land all by yourself. 16 years old, he got out, he shut the door and away I went. And I began to cry because I was soaring like I dreamed all my life. I had no idea that was God preparing me for something. And I'm saying that to you because I know every one of you, when I walked in this church Friday night, I could see the hunger to serve God. I could see your hearts that were ready to give to God. And it's like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do it. The way to do it is get prepared, get on your knees. And when God calls you, step out into the water. God will lead you the rest of the way. Many, many years later, I was 49 years old. I walked into a little church that was just about this size. There was a man that was standing behind this pulpit. His name was Papa Pete Cavazos. And he was preaching just like he was today. And the people could hear it. But all I could feel was a fire burning inside that said, I want more. I don't know what to do. I want more. And I ran to that altar. And Papa Pete and I have been together and been friends. We didn't realize it at the time. We grew up within five miles of each other. But it took 49 years for us to be face to face. Several years later, I'm serving God and I'm in a church. Papa would call me and he'd say, I want you to go on the mission field with me. And I'd say, I can't go, but I'll help my brother go. I'll help my sister go, but I can't go. I don't have that. He'd say, brother, you need to go. You need to just trust God. You need to go. I'd say, I can't go. Not many years later, I was invited to be part of a prayer team. We went to a church that this reminds me so much of. I walked in that back door, and I thought I was in a hospital ward. There were people there on oxygen. There were people there in the wheelchairs. There were people with their canes. 
fear gripped me. Fear gripped me. Because again, I kept listening to the enemy because the enemy says, you can't do it. At the end of that service, the pastor stood over here and he had a team of four people line up across the front. He told those people, he said, I'm telling you tonight, I'm telling you tonight that when you come forward, you stand where you're called, but God is going to move. And I kept thinking, Lord, send them here. Send them there. Don't let them come stand in front of me. But there was a lady that was sitting in the back. Her right leg was stiff all bound up she got up and she began to move and I could tell she was looking right at me she came she stood in front of me and I said tell the Lord what you need and she said I'm scheduled for surgery in two days my knee is completely shattered I have to have it completely rebuilt. But she said, when the pastor said that I could receive from God, I believe I'm going to receive a touch. And I was standing in front of her, just like I'm standing in front of you. And the truth is, I didn't know what to do. I knelt, lowered my head, and I spoke these words. I said, Jesus, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. And he said, you don't, but I do. And I reached out and I touched her knee. And I spoke these words, but they weren't mine, they were his. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I speak a creative miracle. I speak a brand new knee. Everything brand new, just like you created it. That lady began to move her leg, began to move that knee. And then she began to turn and she began to run up and down that aisle. And she's celebrating God. And I'm still on the floor because I can't get up. Because I knew if God could use me to do that, he could use you and you and every one of us. It doesn't take a pastor. It takes a heart that loves Jesus. And it takes us being ready to step in that water. I began to travel and I said, Papa Pete, I'm ready to go. And I began to travel with him. And the more we would minister, the more God would use me. And I would feel that power of God flowing through my hands. And that I would speak and I would know that it wasn't my voice. That it was the voice of God. And I began to see every miracle that they talked about in the Old Testament. Every miracle taking place before my eyes. We finished that trip. We're headed to the airport. We're tired. We're ready to go home. Papa Pete comes up to me. He said, did you have a great time? I said, I've never experienced God like that. He said, well, I'm just telling you, you'll never come back and do it like this again. And he walked off. And I was hurt. I was hurt to the bone. I thought I'd done something really wrong. He got on the plane with me, come sit down. He said, you don't understand what I just said to you. He said, when you come back, You're going to stand behind that pulpit and you're going to begin to preach the Word of God. I said, but Papa, I'm not a speaker. I'm not a preacher. He said, when you come back, God's going to use you. 
Why am I telling you all this? Because every one of you has it inside of you. God's already poured it in your heart. He's just waiting for one thing. Just step in the water. Step in that water. You know, this whole day, you may not realize it, but you've been stepping in the water. How many of you have done things today that you've never done before in church? How many of you have danced and shouted like you never have before? It's because God's saying you're free. You're free. We go back to Uganda. We've been having awesome services and God has been moving and cancer has been defeated and the blind have, their eyes have opened. People that have hearing aids were throwing them away. And it was just, words can't describe it unless you've experienced it. I walk into Papa's room the next afternoon. I'm excited. We're going to go have another night. He said, Brother, he said, I'm not feeling real well. He said, Tonight is yours. You're going to speak. I couldn't answer him. I couldn't answer him. But that night, the church was so packed that they'd moved everything outside. They had a platform built out of wood planks that was running like the waves. They had one spotlight that was over the platform and a few lights. There were over 400 people in that audience. And then beyond that, you could just see and hear people in their homes sitting in the window sills. And I'm sitting there shaking. host pastor said it's time that remember we're in Africa singers clear the platform two men carry the pulpit I'm watching behind them I have my Bible I walk up I put my Bible down I open it my notes I realize the light is shining on the speaker can't see any notes Stayed up all night preparing for it. Can't see the notes. And I remember just kneeling on that podium. I said, God, once again, I can't do it. He said, I want you to take your notes, put them in your Bible, close it, and just follow me. Just follow me. And the message that came out and the scriptures that came out is because they were inside. They were inside. Every time you go to that altar, every time you pick up that Bible, it's more and more coming inside us. You know, I'm going to ask some tough questions right now. We have all stood in the presence of God since Friday night in this church. We have bathed in it. This morning, the Holy Spirit was here when you got here. And it has moved all day long. And the Holy Spirit still wants to move. But what the Holy Spirit wants right now is for you to just spend one minute with yourself. You don't need to ask anybody. You can just close your eyes for one minute and look inside and say, Lord, will you use me? Will you use me? I don't know that I have any gifts or any talents, but will you use me? Father, I look at this church like it's a boat. And 
I can see the waves outside and they look like they're high and it looks like this boat may move in a direction that I don't know and Father the thought of just stepping outside this boat it's scary but Father I love you I know you love me enough to send your son Jesus. And I know he reigns supreme in my life. But Father, if I'm willing to just take that step out of the boat, will you be there for me like you were for Peter? Will you be there for me if I kneel before the sick and the hurting like you were with Papa Arnold? Will you be with me if you call me to speak and I stand before two or two million? Will you be with me? So now I want you to open your eyes. Because I'm saying to you, Pastor, please come right here, Papa Pete. I'm telling you right here, right now, that everyone in this building, everyone, that God has given you all the gifts, every one of them, and he wants to use you. God's never going to make you. He wants you to take that step. But I'm saying to you in the name of Jesus that if you come forward and you say, I want to be used by God, I want those gifts to come bubbling out and roaring like a river. And if you ask me to lay hands upon the sick, They'll be your hands, Jesus. If you ask me to speak, it will be your words, Jesus. Whatever you ask me to do, I'll do. If you believe that and you feel God calling you to step out of the boat, you step forward. The anointing is on these men right now. And if they lay, you speak to them what you want. They lay their hands upon your forehead. It's going to come like a river. It's going to come like a river. And it will begin to flood over you like a river. And God is going to change your life like never before. So I want you to play, guys. Page. Come, just put, just come to these people. Lift your hands up, and God will give you the words. And when they lay their hands upon you, I will promise you in the name of Jesus, you will never be the same. Father, begin to pour out your Holy Spirit. You see the hunger of the people. Father, we have given you praise and glory in your house. Father, we know that alone we do not have it. But Jesus reigns supreme in our lives. Father, every gift you have given us, these that stand before this altar, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You may see things today that you haven't seen before, but it's all in the name of Jesus. It's all in the name of Jesus. 
You can sit back and you can wait, but there's never a time like this. Be brave enough to step out. Touch him, Father. Touch him, Father. Give your all to Touch Jesus. Touch him, Father. Yes, Father. There is freedom. Yes. Yes, Father. If Bring forth your word, Father. Yes. There is freedom. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Give your all to Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Give him all there is free in us. Oh, oh, oh. Give your all to Jesus. There is free.
every single place there is freedom. Freedom is this place. Freedom in this place. Showers of mercy and grace. Please. 
let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your Let it rain. 
all of you to stand, if you would, please. God is in the house.
pray God now. So Louis, Lord, that you'll touch him. That you'll help him. Father, I know, Lord God, you begin to work with him. You deliver him right now. Take the desire the hunger for drugs. While you're all standing, I want you to lift your right hand toward the pastor and his wife. Papa Pete is going to lay his hands upon them. He's going to speak blessing. Listen, Pastor Danny, it, it seems like it's been like forever since I've known you, but it's just been a short time. Little did you and I know that we would be at this place when we met in the hall. We didn't know. We didn't know. I could have gone with Pastor Timbu. You could have gone with Mike. But instead, God says, you two guys go together. So we went everywhere, wherever God sent us. We shared. I didn't know your wife and your children. I just heard about it. But God began to orchestrate something that has brought us to this day a fellowship. It'll continue. It'll continue even in the, in the Philippines. Your name and your legacy there because of your dad will also go with me because I'm your friend, because I'm your brother in Christ. So we'll work up together in the harvest fields that your dad established. Did you hear what I just said? We'll work together there. Okay? Many workers are being called. I'm just one of them for that unfinished harvest. You said it to me. Philippines is ripe for harvest. Oh, how true that is. Okay. I long to go back to work in the harvest fields of God's calling for my life. It just happens to be, not by accident, but by divine appointment, that it is your papa's fields that I'm working in. One man buys the land. Another one plows the fields. Another one, okay? plants, another one, waters. And then there are those that just weed it. Pull the weeds out. That's who I am. To make ready the harvest. To make ready the grain. You and I are together. You hear? Join hands. No, you are. Yes. I am not done with you. The work that I've called you to do will continue. The power of God that has been upon you will continue. The anointing that was upon your father is upon you both. The vision that was in his heart is upon you. That work will not stop. It has continued and will continue through your children and your sons. Ministers of hope. A family of hope. Esperanza. Hope. Okay? You are the ones that I have raised up. Nothing is lost. Some time ago, your father crossed that river. He pulled the stones out of the river and he planted them on the other side. When my sons come through here, when my children 
heirs apparent to my inheritance, when they come through, they will know that I passed through here. And these stones will be a witness of what God has done through me. Listen, brother. Listen, my sister. You have to take the stones that God has given you. Cross your river. Put them in the center. Take stones out of the river. Put them on the other side. That when your children come to walk across your river, they will be crossing the river of the Father. The ministry will go on. Lessons will continue. The anointing will continue. Huh? It will be greater than what it's been. Your sons don't know it yet. But they're scholars among them. Right now they don't look very scholarly. <laughs> but they're scholars. Leaders for leaders. You hear what I just said? Leaders for leaders. Okay? And your daughter's not behind you. That baby girl is blazing the trail. She's getting ready for the brothers to come home. Pastor Danny, I love you, my friend. Pastor Esther, I love you, my sister. I love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Thank you for allowing Papa's house to come. But to be part of this, to be part of what we're doing. Okay? We go away full. We thought we came full. Oh, no. We go away full now. Okay? We go away just rejoicing. This has been a one powerful weekend. Not just for us, but for all of you. And that God is in it. Lord, what are you doing in the back? Come on up here. Let us stand. Come on. Come on, Lord. Vente, pásate, pásate, oh Lord. Ándale, pásate. Ándale, papá, estás en atrás. May the grace of God be upon you, my brother. May his face look toward you, and may his face shine upon you. May the eye of the Lord ever look deep into you, look ahead of you, and may he make straight the paths that are crooked. May he remove the stones that the enemy has rolled in your path. There is a sound of heaven then. But those that sat in the region of darkness, they saw a great light. Light having sprung up. Jesus has come. And my brother, you're that light. You've been brought to Bakersfield to shed that light of Christ in a place where darkness says you will not come. It matters not what the brethren plan. It's what God plans. It matters not what the brethren think. It's what God thinks. It matters not what others may pull together. God says, that's what works. And I've called you, and I've brought you, and I've sent you. And I will take care of the situation. You'll know. All of you will know. You understand? Laura? Laura? brothers-in-laws and husbands raise a standard raise a standard I'm telling you now in front of everybody raise the standard brothers if you drag it down you'll drag down everybody but if you raise a standard you raise the presence of God in this place you're the key you're the catalyst I done told you that you hear me Lord entiende lo que estoy diciendo I want to, before we turn this service back over to Pastor, God has a word for each one of you that's very personal, that comes right out of his scripture. Pastor Danny, Pastor Esther, in Isaiah 41.10, he says to you, fear not, for I am with you. 
Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand.